Hey guys, this guide is my second one so far. Um, if you haven't seen the first one, it's based on early level movement for Ninja. Uh, I highly recommend watching it if you're still in the early stages of the class. Uh, it'll help you a lot with learning how to do uh, looped movement, which is very important. Um, I do plan on making another one hopefully soon, but for, for now this one will be catered for large scale play and how to engage or set yourself up uh, to make plays. I'll be going over how to engage properly with certain skills, positioning, and what to do in Siege slash Node War. Um, and I hope you all enjoy. The advice I'll be giving you uh, in this guide will be used to engage targets and give you the most chance of success while doing so. I'm going to go over examples of what these engages might look like and how to incorporate it into your own playstyle. Um, there's a lot to cover in this video, so I'll try to make it somewhat brief in some of the parts, but uh, Engaging in large scale fights takes a lot of practice and knowledge of what to do and when to engage. So there are key skills that allow you to do this and I'll be going over those skills in the video. I'm also going to be talking about our role in Node War and Siege and what you should expect if you're planning on going into a guild that uh, participates in either of this. Um, I'm going to be going into what our main objective is during these uh, wars and what we should be doing. The Siege meta has changed quite considerably when it comes to Ninja. Um, a lot of the new classes do more work than we do when it comes to Ball v Ball uh, or dive bombing into groups. Uh, Ninja has been pretty tame over the last year or so in its aggressive role in Siege and Node War. Uh, this is also excluding Succession, uh, which I feel is like an entirely different class from Awakening and it has its own strengths and weaknesses when it comes to large scale. With the introduction of classes like Stuck Wizard and others uh, that have a large protected CC pool and SA trade damage output, um, this forces our class into a role of being a, a support skirmisher. Um, this lets us be quite helpful when it comes to killing important game changing structures like uh, cannons, flags, or rebuilds. Um, you might not like having to go around and kill cannons every war, but um, it's what a lot of ninjas have to do in guilds and it's what we're relegated to having to do. Uh, even myself, uh, I'm quite active when it comes to killing cannons or going after flags uh, in wars because it helps put pressure off of our guild at that point. Our class is a very good small scale skirmisher so fighting cannon teams or flag defenders is quite easy for us since our ability to 1vx in those scenarios is good enough so that other classes that ball v ball better can stay in, a, in that fight. If you've ever done a node war you will have seen these structures before. They're called rebuilds and they play a vital role in getting a guild's momentum back up if they've been destroyed. These are the structures that ninjas should always focus on since it plays a huge role in balancing the fight. When it comes to killing rebuilds, you want to focus on important game changing structures. Uh, the first one is the flame tower. These are absolutely aids to fight against when killing a base and they can slow down pushes immensely. If you can consistently kill the rebuild for a structure like this, your shot caller will love you. Next is the supply depot, which is the second most important considering it allows guilds to repair and get horses, buy pots, buy new annexes, and stun traps. Uh, when these structures are first placed, they have literally 1 HP, so you just have to throw a skill at it and they will die. That's why if you ever see a base getting its rebuilds up constantly, just keep killing them over and over and over. If you don't know what the two bars below the name means, the first one is the HP of the item being placed. It gains HP over time, so the longer you wait, the harder it will be to kill. The second bar is a timer until it will be fully rebuilt. Uh, once it's fully rebuilt, the entire structure gets placed and all the HP gets put back on it instantly. So, like the HP bar that you see now, it'll basically go to full instantly and it won't be possible to kill anymore without with like without like a full guild push this is why you want to engage uh these annexes early on when they're being rebuilt and if you can kill them quickly it helps your guild a lot there are other annexes uh that can be rebuilt such as recovery centers that lower the timer of respawning and cannon slash elephant observatories uh, these don't usually take priority when it comes to killing rebuilds but if you can get them in the process it's very worth it When it comes to BSR skills, your three most important ones are Chaos Spree, Sudden Decapitation, and Katana Shower BSR. 
these three are you're going to be the ones that you're going to use the most often and uh, when it comes to demounting people off of, off uh, mounts like cannons and horses uh, there's different ones that perform better than others uh, like for example for sudden decap the only time you ever want to use this one is uh, when there's people on cannons and there isn't anyone around them to, to take them off or to, to stop you from taking them off so what I mean by that is like if there's a person on a cannon just sitting there and there's nobody near you what I do a lot of the time to save BSR is I'll do the decapitation one and the easiest way to do it is you left click first to do a skill so you can seamless with spacebar that's the only way to proc seamless so I'll do left click seamless and then I tap right click and then hold left click afterwards to proc sudden decapitation and doing that will demount him off the off the mount so do it again a little bit slower I do left click seamless tap right click and then left click afterwards like that as you can see with the keyboard uh, that one will be your most simple one to demount people off of horses or off of off of cannons with without sacrificing a lot of your BSR to do so um, the next one that I usually do is chaos free um, to proc this one you basically do down E and then you press R and B right after as well uh, just like the sudden decap one I use this one it's the actual skill is like very stationary and um, you have to move your camera to do like the BSR or to like aim it and stuff uh, it being stationary I don't use it very often uh, but the times I do is if I need to get people off of the mount off of the cannons quickly and there's people near me I'll I'll go up next to them and then uh oh it's on cooldown. I'll do chaos spree like like that and then just get out of the way as quickly as possible and let someone else frag on them. Um, since it's a frontal guard, I usually like to use this one over the decap one, so I'm slightly protected. I usually don't want to waste my entire 50% BSR on demounting cannons, so that's why I do it like that. Um, for katana shower though. You can use Katana Shower to demount cannons, but the only time you ever want to do that is if there's a large group of players near it as well, and you want to just demount them while also trying to CC other players. That's when you would want to use that skill. Um, for these skills, by the way, I would take time and practice uh, using them. The easiest way to do so is like going to like level 1 HP mobs. Uh, I'm on a Hadoom server, but if you go off a Hadoom server, just Go to like any of these places and farm BSR off of them so you can uh, practice using these skills and have a better understanding of how to use them uh, correctly. Uh, and then what I mean by that is by like the key inputs because it is quite difficult to learn it straight away and it will take time to fully master it. Now when it comes to demounting horses, um, I always use 50 BSR for that. Uh, the reason I do that is because it's a large AoE CC and it dismounts quite effectively. So if you ever see like people, like a large group of players running down with horses, I'll show examples of this with clips, but um, what I do a lot of the time is if I see like people just running down a road and there's a group of them with horses, I'll get in the way of them and then I'll 50 BSR directly in front of the group and Anyone that runs into my AoE while the 50 BSR is gone is going on. It all it takes is one tick to de to demount them. So you'll see a huge amount of players just demounting behind you. And what I do a lot of the time is I'll just instantly serpent float all of them on the ground. And um, that's how you can disrupt large regroups of of players on horses. Um, Another effective way to use this is to kill uh, casters on horses that are trying to meteor your your ball. And what I mean by like meteoring meteoring your ball, there's usually people. There's like a, I don't know if it's an exploit or not, but um, what you see a lot of the time is casters will be holding meteor on their horses, and if you hold a meteor on your horse, um, it doesn't drain your stamina. So you could literally hold a meteor on your horse. Uh, indefinitely and it also brings down the cooldown so they can do meteor and then instantly skill up a next meteor and do another meteor so you basically do like double meteor on a horse and these people can really mess up your ball engages if they're running 
like side side by side with your ball and then just engage your ball like right before it pushes their ball. So like what a lot of the times I'll do is I'll look for these people riding on horses or also like important people like uh, scouters. Uh, people will usually scout around your ball on horses and I'll try to mimic what they're doing and follow them and then if they if they're like coming in a line of direction towards me I'll instantly 50 BSR and demount them and then kill them with serpent. Um, these are also very high value targets because there's a chance that they're gonna be people who are scouting your ball and they also are trying to look for an engage on your ball so stopping them is a high priority. For these next clips I'm gonna be showing you uh, how I dismount people off of horses and why I do it. For these clips with me trying to CC roots, uh, I'm focusing him because I know for a fact he's a high priority target in Cho and he relays a lot of information for his caller and he's a very good player so killing him is actually quite important. Uh, I missed both opportunities but it shows the importance you want to have into killing players who uh, use horses like this. What I wanted to show in these clips is the importance of BSRing people off of horses. Um, as you can see, like there's a pretty big uh, opportunity to be had when using BSR to stop people regrouping. Um, that's why I always uh, advocate for people to use their BSR uh, in this way if they just never use it in a, in a fight or they just have it sitting for a long time. You don't want to just have 100% BSR uptime all the time and never use it. Uh, you definitely want to try to find ways to incorporate that into your into your playstyle. So for this first clip, CPCP and I are disengaging from four targets that are following us. Uh, my plan here is to bait my friend who is going to keep moving forward while I only shadow past the door and wait for them to run through. My first target is the witch that TPs into the doorway, which allows me to kill their PA and heals right off the bat. Uh, when you're deciding who to attack first, you always want to prioritize classes that can heal or PA, and especially ranged classes like Ranger or Archer. Uh, these will be your easiest kills and your most important ones. Never try to engage targets like a Sork or a Skirmisher class that can evade you easily. It'll uh, take you too long to kill them, and by that point, you'll, you'll be dead. My first ability that I will use here is Beheading. This allows me to AoE stun my targets and set up for the incoming people. I do this by beheading behind them and then shadow stomping away from the door. This gives me time to see swap towards it in case any targets move too quickly in the doorway. The witch ends up dying just as the other targets come inside the doorway, uh, which I'm already doing my C swap so that I have a protection in case they try to do a ranged CC uh, at me. And at this point you can see CPCP is still quite a ways away from me so my first thought is to delay CC and wait for him to come help. As you can see here, my block jump ends up CCing two targets. This allows me to CC the middle one with a, a grab and then give time for CPCP to arrive and help. My next skill after these two is Katana Shower BSR. I use this one over the others since my targets are not clumped together for a smaller CC, so my best option is to AoE float them and have CPCP clean up afterwards. For scenarios like this, there's always a chance of something resisting or people being too tanky for you. If you find yourself uh, in a similar situation as this one, especially if you have no backup, you always want to preserve your life. In large scale, you never needlessly want to throw your life away. If you get one kill and have three to four people coming to refrag you, your job is to stay alive and always disrupt. You never need to feel like you have to make huge plays to do that. If you have a better chance of trying to pick off players one by one, you want to take that chance instead of going for a hero play that won't work most of the time. For this next example, I'll be showing how to pre-engage and disengage after an attack on a small group of players. Um, to start off this clip, as you can see me on the map, uh, the guild I'm working for is retreating down the bridge and Ingenium's following up on them at the end of the bridge where they're holding out and waiting for them to repush. Uh, for me this is a perfect time to exploit my use of Oni Shadow uh, which allows me to get close and engage them with a little repercussions for myself. As I inch closer I look for targets that will benefit the next engage uh, when my guild pushes in. 
Um, these would be witch, wizards, rangers, archers, or zergers. These are all very important classes that you want to attack first, uh, since they're the ones that are going to dictate the fight the most. Uh, classes that have a block or dash, like Musa or Mewa, you usually don't want to go for because it's going to be quite hard to catch them out of stealth. Uh, same with Sorks and Tamers and whatnot. My decision to engage is based off the fact that a uh, caster is slowly moving back, uh, which can easily dictate the fight that is coming up with protected area. There is also nobody to my east that is visible on the map, so I won't have to worry about getting peeled from behind. And the rest of his guild is preoccupied with setting up for the incoming engage from my guild. I use Beheading as my opener because it's fast and I can cancel out of it. I also want to maximize my CC AoE potential on the targets that I'm engaging on. What I do first is wait for the damage to roll out with Beheading, since the rest of the guild is still not paying attention to what's happening next to them, and this gives me uh, enough time to get free damage in. I cancel out right after the damage portion of Beheading with Ghost Step. Um, the important part here is that I go step away from my targets so I can be further away from them in case uh, any teammates are spamming CC skills on top of their body. And I reposition with Shadow Stomp by moving back towards them to float CC and then finish off with filler protected skills like Bladesmith Super Armor into Illusion of Restraint Rebomb Frontal. At this point, I see the Moose is already reacting to me, so I set out to engage him and get ready for the incoming peels. Right after Illusion, I decide to try and kill the Musa since I know he might use a skill that allows me to CC him from behind with Block Jump. Uh, Musa is quite a frontal guard heavy at times, so I know I can exploit this. He's already low HP from my Illusion as well, so when he comes to try and CC me, I Block Jump uh, as a way to survey what I'm going to do in the next few seconds I have while being protected. And then I notice that he does a very frontal guard heavy skill and this is easily exploitable with the uh, block jump. I end up CCing him with the skill, so what I do next is I go step to the side and serpent him to finish him off quickly and efficiently. Now here is where you should 100% disengage. Um, since by now, if you haven't noticed, my guild is fully retreated and the targets that I'm engaging are getting reinforced from their fort. Uh, the ranger here is a high priority kill, but it's also not worth you dying, especially since there will be no engage from your guild at this point. Um, since they've already retreated away, there's absolutely no point to go back in. If they were pushing as you finished off the Musa, then you would have a reason to engage again since you could be acting as a source of pre-engage and a distractor for uh, your guild as they engage. You always want to never extend fights that have no meaning. Uh, since your entire job is to be disruptive to regroups, Overcommitting is what gets me killed and a lot of other ninjas killed when they attack large groups like this. You want to take engagements that give you the largest amount of success for little risk. That's why Oni Shadow is such a strong skill for engages like these. It gives you the ability to come in and out of stealth and engage groups at will. You always want groups to feel like they're going to get stealthed on from behind and engage at every interval. That's why staying alive is the best course of action because once you die they don't have to worry about you stealthing them anymore. This clip is going to show you what you definitely do not want to do for engages. Uh, I basically end my life here for no gain, and I'm going to show how scenarios like this play out. If you look at the minimap, you can see that I have a guildie that is trying to fight about four people right now. At this point, I could easily engage and stop maybe one or two people with a hard CC and have my guildie try to get out. Uh, but there are some fights that are very hard to judge how easy it would be for you to get out once you engage. If you look around on the map, you can see that players from uh, the enemy guild are converging from all directions. I take this into account and don't engage uh, to help. Now that I see that they're clumping together a bit harder, I decide that I might be able to CC one or two on the outside and kill them while disengaging afterwards. But as I'm ninja stepping out of stealth, I see four people in render range that I did not see before engaging and so now I have to go for beheading and I'm already regretting my decision since surprisingly they had very good awareness and countered my initial engage by reacting quite quickly. This got me pretty much instantly killed for no gain at all. As you can see shortly after I died a large group of players start congregating around the area since our base is just in front. If we go back to the start of this fight 
you can see that there are multiple options for me to engage groups of players coming from back from a different direction to reinforce. This would have allowed me to divert attention from my guildie as well as picking off two to three players depending on how well I could get the initial CC. In Siege, your time to kill or TTK has to be extremely short. Otherwise, you run the risk of getting either refragged after you kill someone or getting peeled by the enemy. This is why you have to take fights that have a large percentage of winning in that regard. You never want to try to be a hero and slam CC 10 people stacked because 9 out of 10 times you will die from that, just like as I died uh, in mine. Your enemy has to be completely clueless, like standing still waiting for a regroup or repairing a fort. Open field fights where a lot of people are expecting to be stealthed on or engaged uh, usually never works well for ninjas. As a closing statement to the guide, I want this video to be aimed at helping new ninjas who haven't node ward yet, and also help existing ninjas find out their role and place in large scale. I hope the PvP clips gave you guys a better understanding of what I'm thinking during a 1vx scenario, and how to use that knowledge to help yourself. I'll be planning on making an updated movement guide next, but for any more updates or questions for this guide, please ask them on my Twitch or Discord server. And thank you guys for watching.